Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar about Google's new local services ads program. My name is Corey Voss, and sitting next to me is Lindsay Steer. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Lindsay Steer. I'm the general manager for Logical Positions headquarter office here in Portland, Oregon. And um, as I'm sure some of you guys know, Logical Positions is an SEM company, and so we specialize in search engine optimization, pay-per-click management, and web design. And on the phone, we have Jesse Hawkholter. Hey there. Google. Yeah, my name is Jesse, and um, I'm joining remotely from the Googleplex here in Mountain View, California. And I'm really thrilled to be joining my friends at Logical Position. I'm Global Programs Lead here, heading up education for our SMB partners. So, very excited to be talking about our local service ads. Great. So, Lindsay's going to go over the agenda, and we're just going to turn our webcams off. All right, guys, so today what we're gonna be covering is just really an introduction to local service ads. Um, we're gonna walk through how to set up your local service ads and how to set them up for success. We're gonna go over audience questions. So um, I'm sure as you guys know, you have a sidebar where you can input questions that we can go over at the end. And then we're also gonna, going to do a raffle for a Google Home. So please do sit through the questions and then you'll have an opportunity to walk away with a Google Home. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Jesse, and she's, she's gonna get us started. Fabulous. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I'm going to start just by talking a little bit, just to give some baseline about AdWords and kind of before we dig into the specifics of these LSAs, the local service ads, and how they fit in, let's talk about Google AdWords and what that is. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Google AdWords. It's the ads that appear on top of this search page. So it's really a, an awesome way to reach customers, potential customers who are looking for exactly your product or service in the service area that you provide it. So um, you can see on this screen here that's uh, circling the traditional uh, search ads that you see. This is the SEM or the pay-per-click. So these are a pay-per-click model. You only pay when someone's interested enough to click through to your website, and that'll be the top three or four different um, things that you'll see there. Uh, so this is pay-per-click. If we move on to the next slide, um, then we're going to see the local service ads. So local service ads, you can see on mobile, and there's also going to be a few, if you do a little click there, it's going to show you on desktop. So what local service ads are, they're really ads that are specifically engineered to help local service-based companies. Now this is where it started. This, this, you know, within Google has been something that's taken off really rapidly because of how uh, useful this has been for both the companies that are advertising and also the, the people that are looking for these local services. So just a few features of this, and we're, we're going to dig a lot deeper into it, but it's really prime real estate. It's at the top of the page, even above those pay-per-click search ads that we talked about before. So they're right below the potential customer search query. So you can see in this example, it says Plumber San Diego, and then you have those three local service ads right below. Um, this is a really cool model because you only pay for qualified calls or messages, so it is very leads-based. And there's a whole other interface where you can manage your appointments and leads and see exactly what's coming through, what you're getting charged for, and what's actually happening there. Um, this does come with a Google guarantee, which we will talk about in just a minute. But before we get there, I want to talk about some of the uh, core services that this is available to right now. This is expanding. We do know that. I can't talk about where it's expanding to, but it is expanding and we're seeing different segments have really large interest here. So this should be something where we'll, we're continuing to see different services being added. But right now, plumbing is huge, electrical, HVAC, locksmiths, garage door, house or carpet cleaning. So you can see these are things that have very local intent and things that have a bit more of that immediacy of need. These are things we found work really well with this ad type. And if we move forward, we can see that this is a call-based ad format, as I mentioned. This is something that is call and lead based. The good thing about this is even if you're a you know a really small business or you don't, you know, you're not quite up to speed with all of the, the digital bells and whistles in terms of your website. Um, this is call based, so we are looking to drive calls. We're also looking to drive, you know queries in that sense. So this is, you can see the unit shows that carousel of three different of uh, these uh, Google verified businesses. And this is going to be shown based on things like proximity. So where are people searching from? Are you a close business for them? 
job type, so is this very relevant for what they're looking for? Um, so you can see this is a locksmith in San Francisco, so we want to make sure it's really relevant to that. And then also provider responsiveness, so how quickly you're actually responding to those reviews and the or to those people that are calling, and then also reviews. So this is a, a way, it's a call-based, leads-based ad format that's really all about local. And Moving on a few, this is a, a really great way to, way to build trust online. So I know probably a lot of you are familiar with Google My Business, which is that, you know, the side, the thing that appears on the side that shows your map and pictures of your location, your hours. This is similar to that in some ways. Um, it's, it's a bad badge of trust in that sense. Lindsay's going to dig in a, into it in a couple of slides about what it means to be Google guaranteed and what that process is and what that actually means to the consumer. But this is a badge of trust when you're showing up on these local services ads. So it means that they, you've met Google's qualifying criteria um, and you can see exactly where those reviews are, really similar to the Google My Business page. But this is going to be done in that ad format in a leads-based sort of manner where you're only paying when someone actually has um, a need for that service. And with that, moving forward, this is what this really is, is it, it's quality leads with less legwork. That's kind of the whole idea here. As I mentioned before, your, your business has this really nice profile page um, in tandem with your Google My Business page. And this is where people can see your reviews, they can see um, the Google guarantee, they can book right there, they can see your hours. Uh, but you don't have to have that really fancy website. So it's really, really good for these smaller businesses. It's been extremely helpful for not only the business, but also, like I said, for the, the end consumer. And then finally, before I pass it over to Lindsay, um, this Google guarantee, which uh, I don't want to take steal Lindsay's thunder because it's actually it's pretty cool, but this is how you stand out is, you know, as the local services advertiser, you get that guaranteed badge, which is, you can see that green badge that's there. And so this gives you not only that, that guarantee you've gone through all these background checks and all these other checks that Lindsay's going to mention, but you also have access to that premium inventory. So you can be at the top there and you can show all your great results and you're actually showing up there because we know that you're a responsive business and you're taking care of your clients. So it's a really great way to stand out. So um, with that, uh, Lindsay, I'm going to pass it over to you so you can talk about what being Google Guaranteed actually means. Awesome. Thank you, Jesse. So yeah, um, what does it mean to be Google Guaranteed? So Jesse kind of touched on this a little bit, but one of the biggest kind of differentiators of being Google Guaranteed and carrying that green badge on your business listing means that you've been heavily, heavily vetted. So part of the kind of Google Guarantee process is that there are... Um, three different background checks that actually occur. We'll dive into, you know, exactly, you know, kind of how those are processed. Um, they're also going to look at licenses and insurance validation to make sure that uh, companies have what they need to. Um, and then also, you know, this is really a badge that does demonstrate that you are reliable and trustworthy to the consumer, so much so that um, Google will actually guarantee work up to $2,000 on uh, Google guaranteed listings here, which is pretty cool. So I think one of the best parts of this LSA program is the fact that you get to pay for performance rather than clicks. So as you guys can see, and as Jesse talked about, um, there's really transparent pricing that is based on a set cost of your service, uh, where you are located, what city you operate in. So for example, um, you know, we basically went through the cost estimator and we saw that plumbers in Portland are set at about $20 per lead on the cost. Also, Google has an algorithm where they can look at the quality of incoming, incoming leads through the sales app, look at duration, look at things of that nature, um, and give you the ability to dis dispute leads that you don't think are actually qualified. And actually, I think Jory, Jesse has some uh, stories of some people who have recently used the service. Yeah, yeah, and this is something I really want to stress. This, this is this is really important because a lot of people ask whenever Google makes changes like this to ad formats, especially things that kind of shake up the ecosystem. The question is always, why? Why did you do that? And the truth is that Google, you know, we really take it seriously, putting users first. And users doesn't just mean the searchers; it also means the local providers. It means everyone who is utilizing the platform. So this was something where when it was in beta, we were just seeing huge success on both sides. So you can see this is a quote from 
uh, Randy and Elf Grove, who's a homeowner, this started in more of the, the Bay Area uh, when it was first launched. He says, great service and overall complete experience from using Google to find a reputable contractor to get the job done. So very happy homeowner. And then on the other side, you see this local provider, Norm, who says, every day I get new customer requests from local services. So this is kind of exactly what we want, is it's another way to be connecting those local businesses that really are the fabric of, of our local ecosystems with the consumers that need them. Not to sound cheesy, but it's, this, is, this is what's so exciting here. Um, so those are some success, success stories. Now, this is a question you might be asking yourself if you're running search currently or you're thinking about running search, and this is something we've gotten a ton of questions on, and I'm happy to have, you know, Lindsay chime in if you want to, but this is something that I'm really passionate about because I hear constantly, okay, so I'm doing LSAs, these local ser service ads, why should I do search also? Why should I do pay-per-click? It seems like this is cannibalizing that. The truth is, this is a really similar thing that happened back when you know we used to just run display ads, or even if we think about before with traditional media. I, I have a newspaper background, so I think I like to think of things in terms of traditional and digital intersecting. And when digital came along, it was like, oh, we shouldn't do traditional anymore. Um, we were doing banner ads, and that was you know cheaper, faster, stronger. Then search came along and people were like, oh, we shouldn't do banner ads anymore. We should just do search. But the truth is all of this stuff balances together and it all works on different parts of the funnel. So as you can see, LSAs, they're really engineered to gain exposure for those really, really direct local searches. So if you want maximum exposure and to actually have the cost per lead driven down even further because people have that brand awareness, you're going to be needing to do other forms of advertising as well. This is a supplement. So this is geared toward those longer tail searches like fix a leaky faucet, but when people are in research mode, they're more likely to click on the actual ads that have a bit more information about the business or the organic search results. So um, text ads cover areas that LSAs may not cover because we only show three and they're, you know, it's very um, specific to what that geographic area is and things like um, you know, response time and reviews. So you might need a little bit of time to build that stuff up before you have a great presence with LSA. And we want to make sure that we have those text ads to supplement so that we're getting even more business. So it's really going to depend on your goal. And this is why I'd highly recommend just, you know, tap logical position to see if they can take a look at your particular business and what makes sense for you. What combination of these things are going to be good for your business. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Lindsay if you want to talk to us about what it takes to set this all up. Yeah, guys. So, um, you know, there are basically four different steps that come into what do you need to sell up, set up LSAs. So the first of those has already been covered, but you have to be a provider in one of these specific verticals. Um, as Jesse mentioned, they are looking to expand this, and we've even had some experience firsthand with them allowing in some kind of gray area companies. But for right now, it's really only for plumbing, electrical, HVAC, locksmiths, garage door, house cleaning, carpet cleaning. Um, we do have a client who um, is an arborist that we were actually able to get in through a review process that we can talk about a little bit later. So number one, be a provider in one of these areas. Number two, you need to be able to clear background checks in order to set up these LSAs. So that's going to include a background check by the business, a background check of the business owner, and a background check of all different field employees that are interacting with uh, prospective customers. Third, you need to have proper insurance and licensing for your business. There are some things where um, I believe if it's jobs under $500 um, per job that there's some different kind of guidance with the insurance and licenses, but definitely in some of these verticals like HVAC, electrical, it is required. Um, and then the fourth is going to be having a Google My Business page so that you can field reviews, you know, drive interactions, keep all of your kind of business information in one spot. So those are the four things that you're going to need to set up LSAs. And then we're going to talk about, you know, what that setup process looks like. So it is a little more cumbersome than your average AdWords account. As we all know, setting up Google AdWords can be almost instantaneous, whereas the LSA process is going to take somewhere between two to three weeks. We tend to actually see it taking closer uh, to four to six weeks for total setup. So just be prepared for that end of it. <laughs> um, so in order to set it up, the first kind of piece of this is a business questionnaire. 
Um, we highly, highly recommend that companies go through these business questionnaires as a team because it's incredibly important that all the information contained within the questionnaire is completely accurate to your company. Um, we heard a story about a business owner who went through the form by himself. He actually got a couple of pieces of the information wrong and it halted the entire setup process and it's been very difficult for him to go back and correct. So better to just do it correctly the first time around. So then once that business questionnaire is compiled, it's gonna be submitted to Google. Once Google has processed it, they're going to send the client a welcome email to the primary email address that's listed in the questionnaire. Um, it's then going to prompt the client to log into the, um, the dashboard and continue the setup process from there. And this is where the background checks are gonna be conducted. So two notes on the background checks. Background checks are done through Pinkerton. Um, and then the second note is that the background checks are free for businesses trying to set up LSA. So once you have LSA up and running, one of the things that we wanted to talk about is how do you increase your exposure? Uh, there are a variety of different companies that do run LSAs, and so we want to make sure that people can maximize their um, exposure at the top of the listings. And one of the biggest ways to do that is going to be to aggregate more high-quality reviews. Um, you know, it is a quantity and a quality factor. So if you have a five-star review, but you only have one of them, you're maybe not going to get as good of exposure as somebody who, say, has 24.9 star reviews. So making sure people are engaging with your Google My Business page, that happy customers are leaving reviews is going to be really, really important to increasing your exposure. Um, that goes directly to number two, which is driving interactions on your Google My Business page. There are a lot of um, email automation systems that can send out to uh, previous previous clients to generate more reviews. You can upload photos. You can, you know, really do a lot on that page to, you know, make sure that it's getting exposure and driving interactions. And then the third thing is when you do get leads from the LSA system in the local, in the services app, make sure that you're reaching out to them promptly. So try to call or message as soon as possible. Make sure you're dealing with those leads uh, promptly and professionally. And then talking more specifically about the local services app, this is where you go to manage LSA leads, to manage your budget, um, and to also potentially dispute leads. So it is really easy to manage and interact with your prospective customers through this system. Um, you can see exactly where your budget's being allocated, how many leads have come back through that you know, cost per lead system. Um, and like we mentioned, one of the great parts is that you can dispute any leads in the dashboard itself, there's a little dot next to the lead. Uh, Google usually takes about a week or so to determine um, you know, a ruling on a lead dis dispute, um, and then it'll credit it back to your account. And similarly, the um, system is always going through and looking at validity of leads, and oftentimes without even your prompting, it will be crediting back dollars to the account if it determines that something was not qualified. Um, and through the system, you can also manage your booked appointments. So it's kind of a nice little CRM type system for uh, working with your clients. So, you know, really we just wanted to, um, you know, give you guys an idea of what the system looks like. Um, so really the benefit that local service ads have is that you're only paying for quality leads, which is a very different type of advertising than the other systems available on Google where you're paying for impressions or you're paying for clicks. Here, somebody has to you know, find you, they have to call you, have a conversation with you for a certain period of time. Um, so this is a really great way to generate a lot of business um, very predictively to your company. Um, also, this is the best position on the search engine results page. You're above the organic listings, you're above the ads, you are at the top. Um, the transparent pricing is huge for, for again, companies that are budgeting um, and that really need to drive results. And then, um, you know, the ability to manage all of these different systems within the app and being differentiated by being a Google guaranteed, um, you know, badged partner is really going to help differentiate you from everybody else who's in that space. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jesse just to talk about uh, Google, Google Premier Partner Companies and also about logical position. Uh, and we do have the questions coming up here shortly. So. 
Thank you, Lindsay. I, I mean, I just want to reiterate that I, I think this is a really, a really interesting topic, and I know it seems very simple because it is very simple. It's something where, you know, we saw a need and the team developed it and it, it really exploded beyond, you know, what we thought it was going to be just because it was so useful for uh, everyone in the ecosystem. So highly recommend that you take a deeper look into this, have a chat with a logical position to see if they can figure out what the best strategy might be for your business because, again, it's going to be different no matter what, where you're based and, you know, what you're actually doing in that space. So I just want to talk briefly before we get into questions and the all-important Google Home where you can start testing out the, the uh, see if you can find these local service ads on the assistant. Um, what it means to be a Google Premier Partner is it has to do with relationship results, trust, and basically just having the cutting edge information. So um, we have uh, just a handful of Google Premier Partners and Logical Position is in that group. This is managed by Google. They have direct access to Google, which is a partner manager as well as account managers who are going in and spot checking the accounts to make sure they're doing everything correctly and they have all of the, the best practices and they're making sure that everything is running as smoothly as possible for the end users. Because in reality, we realize at Google that we're just not large enough to give the SMBs, to give you guys, you know, all the attention that you need and that you deserve to make sure that these campaigns are running smoothly. So that's where we really lean on our partners and then we supply them with that relationship with all of these resources. Um, you know, they have logical position itself as well as our partners has incredible retention because of the fact that they're able to be so transparent and they're able to really be consultants to you guys that business. So um, really, really important that if you're thinking about doing these things that you think about uh, Google Premier Partner because they do have us in the background and I have worked with logical position for quite a while and they are absolutely fabulous. So um, I'm going to let Lindsay kind of talk about what sets logical position apart. But like I said, use them, use them as, as a little brain trust, have a have a consultation with them. And you know, even Lindsay cover your ears, even if you don't decide to purchase anything from them, use their their knowledge because they are very good. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jesse. I'm blushing. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, guys. So, um, you know, obviously we're a Google Premier Partner program, but um, really just a couple of things I wanted to touch on specifically about the LSAs that we're talking about is that this is a beta program. So this is being tested. Um, so it's not open to, and Jesse, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not open to everyone. Um, and so working with logical yeah. position can help you navigate the tricky setup process, you know, and we're getting direct updates from Google on this beta. So we can make sure that any Clients who are going to be in new verticals or any clients that are going to be in new cities can be up to date ASAP and, you know, take advantage of this. Um, and so one of the other kind of, I guess, uh, perks that we have in being a Google partner with this system is that we can submit new services for review to be added into the LSA program. And so that's where going back to the Arborist client that we have, uh, they're not technically in one of the verticals that is uh, determined right now. However, they're pretty close. And so we were able to submit that to Google for review and get them approved so that they can actually run LSAs as well. And that's something that we are encouraging a lot of our clients to do is if you are a, you know, local service, you know, um, entity, please, you know, get in touch with us and we'll see if we can do something to get you involved in the program as well. Um, we do have some perks as well for clients that do want to start up, um, you know, these local service ads with logical position. Uh, the first of which is uh, we're giving anyone a free Google Home for starting uh, local service ads with logical position. And we also have a spend match coupon that we can apply to these accounts, these new accounts, where you are accredited $150 worth of free leads, which is a pretty great way to test out the system for the first, first go round. Um, as Jesse talked about earlier, it is super important to use this as an addition onto, you know, usual search network advertising you're doing because that's where you're going to get the greatest benefit. And it's definitely something that, um, you know, I'd be more than happy to talk with anyone about. My contact info is all at the end of this deck and it's going to get emailed out to everybody. So um, that being said, we are going to take a couple of questions. Don't go anywhere, though, because the Google raffle will be coming up right after that. So I'll click over and uh, Jesse and I will do our best to kind of tag team these for you. All right, so questions, let's see. Okay, so are 
first question. It looks like these local services ads, ads only work for B2C companies. Can they be done with B2B services as well? Um, yeah, so I can start, I can tackle that one and then Lindsay, if you want to jump in. Um, sure. they, they are, the, the local service ads were really created for the small businesses and they are in a lot of ways the, the B2C. That said, it doesn't mean that a B2B company can't use them. I know a lot of people, especially like if you think about HVAC, there could be part of the business that is residential and then part that's more commercial. So you can use this for the B2B. It might not be sufficient in that sense. So I would say if you are more B2B focused, you probably, you could test these out, but you also want to supplement them with the pay-per-click advertising. So this would be a perfect case where you'd want to consult with logical position to see what the best solution might be. Oh, we have a lot of questions here. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of knew that would happen, right? Yeah, so um, let's go to this one. Um, whoa, they keep moving. Hold on. <laughs> can a local ser whoa? Can the local services ads be integrated with other booking applications or calendars? So at this time, you're going to manage it in the actual. So to to take a step back. The answers to these questions are always changing because like what was mentioned, this is in beta. Right now, this is going to be managed through the um, portal that you, you do have, the one that uh, Lindsay mentioned. That being said, I know that we're looking at certain integrations, so that might be an opportunity in the future. Next question. Uh, is this a first come, first serve basis with limited spots open for, or is it limited spots open for everyone? Yeah, I can grab that one. So, um, you know, it is not a first come first serve basis program. It is open for anyone who is within those cities and within those specific verticals that we covered who can mm -hmm. move through that setup process. So again, you know, the ability to uh, get through the background checks and have the validated license and insurance and things like that. So it is open to anyone who can meet those requirements and go through the setup process. The real differentiator is again, gonna be in between the types of reviews and things like mm -hmm. that that companies are aggregating in the system. Yeah, and your response time and the, basically the quality of your service, that's what's gonna uh, allow you to show up in those spots. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next one. Is there a long process for moving my ad LSA ads from, say, Portland to Boston if I move my business? Um, so I would say, okay, one thing I want to want to clarify there is, because um, we do get the question a lot, like, let's say I'm in, and this is a different type of question, but let's say I'm in the uh, maybe New York area or I'm in the Bay Area and I want to have different, you know, I have one physical location, but I want to show up to different areas because my maybe I'm willing to drive. Um, this is going to be physical location based. So if you are moving physical locations, I don't anticipate that being a huge challenge in terms of like re-signing up because your team will have already gone through the background checks necessary. They will have already been, you know, verified in terms of their accreditations. It would just be a matter of the actual physical location and changing the phone numbers and that stuff. So I, I wouldn't anticipate that being a huge nightmare of a change. Great. How are leads verified or counted? Is click to call considered a lead? What if the customer ends up canceling? Is that still considered a lead? So um, I think it's good to, you know, kind of think about the system as a, again, a cost per lead system, not a cost per, you know, new client acquisition system. So, you know, Google is basically driving qualified leads through these different verticals to the business that is then responsible for, you know, addressing the questions promptly and then closing that business. So basically to answer the question, there are a lot of different factors that Google's looking at when a lead comes through, like call duration, um, you know, I think verbiage and things of that nature as well to determine if it is a qualified lead. But after that point, if a client cancels or something to that effect, um, that is not considered invalidated. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and there are, like we like mentioned before, there are different types of leads, the message leads and the phone leads. And message leads, obviously, if someone sends a message to you saying, hey, I'm requesting more information, then this is charged as a lead. 
Um, but the phone leads, it's only charged when they're actually, when you can, when the uh, consumer is connected to that service pro. Okay, next one. If a company has verified client reviews through another service like Angie's List or Home Advisor, can those existing reviews be integrated into the LSA listing? Um, so I can I can take this one too. Not at this time because the the reviews that are um, in there are going to be from Google Verif. It's going to be verified that they actually were a customer of that particular um, service pro. So the leads that are in there are going to be very specific to the jobs that happened as a result of that um, pro coming in and, and doing work for them. Okay. So next question. What is the LSA geographic area for a place like San Diego? Is it within a few miles or more? That is going to vary. So I don't know that we have a specific, um, it's not going to be specific in terms of that. It's going to depend on the different numbers of, of pros in the area as well as the um, different factors. So I don't think we can release that information, unfortunately. How do you, how long do you think the wait will be for new verticals to open up? So, so like we, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, <laughs> I was going to say, um, from what I've heard from speaking with Jesse as well as, you know, um, the other people that we have working on this is that we don't actually know how long it's going to be. There are prospective verticals that have been released, but we don't know definitively when those will go live. However, through the ability uh, that Logical Position has to submit companies through the review process, we have had success in getting companies involved in the program that are not currently approved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Jesse can t talk a little bit more, but you know, we always do have the option to submit those for review. Yeah, and I will tell you just from um, different information, some, some internal docs, I'm not going to share the different services because I could get in trouble, but there are lots and lots of different services that are being looked at right now, being looked at to be rolled out in 2018. So um, if you are in a category that isn't mentioned there, but you do feel like it might be a fit, this would be a good opportunity to just tap logical position and even say, hey, keep me in the loop. If this is something that potentially like the Arborist that we could have a maybe figure something out, or if this is something that's planned to roll out, that's something logical position will be informed of and they can keep you in the loop. All right, and our last couple questions were to review the pricing structure again with for LSA ads. So the way the pricing structure works for LSA ads is you basically determine what geographic area you're in and what service you offer. So let's say, for example, I am a plumber in Portland, Oregon. Uh, they, there is a tool where you can go in and estimate what the cost per lead is for you as a plumber in Portland. And I think it was like $20 when I played around with it. So then you can play around with what your weekly budget would look like based on how many leads you'd like to acquire per week. So that system is, is set. So whether you're a plumber in Portland or you are an HVAC contractor in Manhattan, uh, it is a set established transparent pricing per lead. In regard to, you know, logical position, helping people run and maintain LSA ads, all of our pricing is available on our website. And like I said, in addition to running search ad advertising um, for Google AdWords, we would also run LSA for potential um, clients. Awesome. And I think that is all of our questions. So we will move on to the Google Home raffle. Let's see here. And the winner is Ryan Wells. Yeah. Yay. Um, again, we're going. We recorded this webinar, so if you missed anything, we're going to be sending it out um, shortly. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to Lindsay directly. And again, there's a we have a special offer of 150 spend match in your second month and a Google Home for current clients with logical position. So you guys got 20 minutes left of 
Yeah, and just to just to recap, the 150 spend match for free leads in the Google Home is for any n new or existing client who wants to run local search ads with us. So just for setting up that account and for setting up local search ads, um, we have that offer. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do have additional questions or we weren't able to get to your question, please feel free to send me an email and I can get you, um, you know, answers to whatever you need. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, LP, for having me. Thanks, Jesse. Bye.